Hey everybody, welcome back to the Flatiron Student Question of the Week. This week our question is, do I need a tune for that? Yes, with, with Subarus that is a question that comes up quite often. Like, It seems like you have to tune your Subaru for every modification that you make to the car, which is kind of true, not necessarily every single thing, but it does come up where you, you have to, the car has to be recalibrated for a lot of different modifications. So we wanted to dive into why that was the case. We should start with why changing a part requires a tune in the first place. And that it largely is down to the fact that turbocharged Subarus are mass airflow based cars. So they're using a mass airflow sensor to sense the air, to sense the, the mass of air that's coming into the engine uh, right at the filter. And because of that, anything that you do to make the calibration for that sensor incorrect, that's where tune starts to come in. To keep your car running properly, your ECU is just doing a whole lot of chemistry. It's just saying, okay, it's, it's measuring how much mass of air is coming in, and then it's doing the calculation with how much fuel can we burn with that amount of air, and then it's making sure that that amount of air and fuel are getting put into the combustion chamber to let the engine run to make power. And, and then it's, it's just always, it's constantly trying to, to make that calculation. So that's where you've got to know that the sensor input that it's reading is correct. Now, to, to think about, the best way to think about why this is the case with a mass airflow sensor is the first you have to understand that Subaru is using a hot wire mass airflow sensor, which means that there's just a single wire that sticks down into your intake path. And, and the air hitting that single wire is, is taking a very select reading of the air that, that moves past it to calculate the mass for all of the air moving past it. That's where the calibration comes in. The, the way to think about this is, you know, if you look at a river, a river, a stream that's flowing down, and you want to measure how much total water is moving down the river in, in a given time period, but you can only measure one point at some point in the center of that water flow, but there's a whole lot of stuff going on on the sides, and there's different velocities at the shore versus in the center. That's where the calibration comes in. That's basically the calculation that a hot wire map is doing. And so... If all of a sudden you change the diameter of the inlet so that now it's calibrated at, say, like two inches and you change it to two and a half or three inches. Well, you've enlarged the size of the river. You've, you've increased the maximum amount of air that can flow past the sensor. So the calibration has to change. So with any kind of those, anything that changes that calibration, that's where a tune starts to come in. What changes on the engine would require that calibration change? This is why intakes require tunes, because you know the intake is an integral part, and usually the intake is where that mass airflow sensor sits. So where that sensor sits, the diameter of the tube that, that the sensor sits in, those are all parts of that calibration. It's like the newer WRXs, where they, they took the mass airflow sensor and they put it basically right on the corner of the air box, so it's not inside of a tube, it's like sitting on the corner of a box. That calibration is something where any of these aftermarket intakes that are moving to like a short ram or tubular style intake, that calibration is drastically different than what the calibration is for that sensor sitting in the box. That's why putting an intake on requires a tune. When you come to air and fuel, you can't forget the turbocharger. So a turbocharger is taking that air, it's, it's taking the air after the mass airflow sensor has already taken its reading, and it's compressing it, packing it together, making it more dense, so that you can get more air into the cylinder to make more power, which also requires more fuel, but different turbos pack that air together, compress that air in a different way with a different efficiency. And that's why changing the turbo can also require a change in calibration because the car needs to know how that turbo is going to work to, to compress that air to make that intake charge. And to a, to a lesser extent, but it, it's still part of that, is a change to the intercooler. If the intercooler is now much more efficient. That that's changing the density of there as it's getting into to the engine, and so that can require a change of its own. Yeah, and then and the, to a similar extent, the injectors. If you change the size of the injector, that also um, requires a change. But that's that's a little bit easier to understand. You know, if you take an injector that's you know 
roughly 500 cc's of maximum flow and you replace it with an injector that's a thousand cc's in flow so it you know 100 percent duty cycle or staying open as much as possible you're now flowing twice the amount of fuel that's where you need to recalibrate for this injector that now has a much greater ability to flow fuel than what the car came with which was much smaller so it's any of those any changes to to the intake side or to the fueling side where the, the car, the, the ECU has to be recalibrated so that it knows what it's working with. So it knows what that data coming in from these sensors are, uh, uh, are telling it and how to work with it. That's where things require to. What about on the exhaust side? Catback stuff, like basically looking at your mufflers and all that, that doesn't generally make it enough of a difference to change you know, how much air is able to get into the engine, how much power is able to be made. So catbacks don't require to. But... You know, where the catalytic converters are, if that's replaced with a pipe that is, is larger diameter, has more efficient bends. Basically, if, if there's a change that's made so that it's significantly easier for exhaust gas to get out of the engine, that's where efficiency is picked up. But since the exhaust is having an easier time to get out, it's also then a little bit easier for the air to get into the engine as well. So that's where changes to the, to the exhaust can require tune for the same reason the change in the intake path or, or the fueling system could require tune as well. So like a cat back doesn't require a tune. What other yeah. parts don't really require a tune? Small changes to the inner cooler generally don't require a tune, but anything like and cat backs don't require a tune, but that's about it. If you're gonna make a change to the to the intake itself, to the turbo, to the injectors, any one of those things would require a tune. And so that's where what we recommend is if you're gonna make one of those changes and you might need to do one or the other of those changes down the road, try and do them all at the same time so that you can get the maximum benefit for going and getting the car properly tuned for all of those things at, at once rather than in having to go back multiple times to get small tunes done for small differences. Once you have a better picture of what requires the tune and you're, you're trying to build the car to a certain goal, that's where you kind of want to put a bunch of those steps together all at once and install them on the car all at once so that you can just get the one, one tune done and then the car will, will run properly with less tunes, less trips to the dyno. Somebody might be coming to Subarus from a different platform. Why is it like that with Subarus? A lot of cars, especially from, from German manufacturers, do not run mass airflow based intake systems. They run something called speed density, where they're measuring the temperature and pressure of, of the air as it's going, about to go into the engine not trying to measure the mass and those those systems function differently but because fundamentally because you're taking those readings in one of those cars right before the air is going into the engine so right before the throttle body you're trying to measure the pressure and the temperature those cars don't require tuning for as many small changes because like if there's no sensor on your intake it's just basically a hose with a filter on it and there, there's no readings that are done until right before the air is going into the engine, you can put on a different intake and it doesn't require tune because that car is using a different, a different set of readings, a different set of sensors to get the information to the ECU so it can do the chemistry to make sure that the air and fuel mix together properly and, and safely to make power. So it's, it's a different way to do things. The, the common misconception is that if you're running speed density or if you have a car that's speed density from the factory, you can put any intake and turbo and, and make as much power as you want, and it doesn't require any tuning at all. That's, I would say, also not correct because you're still using sensors, and they still have a certain range. And if you put things on the car, it, it might be drivable and run, but you can very quickly get to the limit of the calibration of those sensors. And then that's where something called lip mode starts to kick in. But that's that's probably for a whole other discussion. But Suffice it to say, it's different. They bo both systems have their advantages and disadvantages, uh, but they, they just work slightly differently. Awesome. Well, thanks everybody for checking out our question of the week. Remember, we do these every week, and you can submit your questions below or through our messages on Instagram. Yeah, thanks very much for watching. We really appreciate it. Appreciate your support. And as always, until next time, stay tuned with the Flatirons team.